Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. How are you today on this beautiful day? So as you can tell by the title, today we're going to be chatting about something that is very common within the planner community and in our society as a whole, and that is consumerism. And I'm going to be offering you about 10 different ways, 10 different things, recommendations, or ideas that you can kind of employ immediately that I think is going to be helpful within your planning and journaling and stationary hobby, as well as apply it to your life and it might just help you budget a little bit better. So this is our series called Loud Budgeting. This is a brand new sort of wave that is taking over the budgeting community and the finance community where we're moving a little bit away from quiet elegance and, and quiet luxury where really we, we splurge on, on these no-name brands that cost a fortune and we're moving into loud budgeting, which is actually, if you think back, what our parents used to do when we really truly brag about all the ways that we have saved money. And I mean, I am so here for it because it's just one of those things where you kind of realize that, you know what, we should be taking tips from one another when it comes to saving a few bucks. And especially when we're looking at planning and stationary supplies, I am no, not new to not new to the scene when it comes to buying way too many things and then I'm having a really hard time using it. So I thought that we would kind of chat about that. So if that sounds good, after this long, long intro, then let's just dive right in. And if you've never met me, my name is Meshi and I'm the person behind the line plans. We chat a couple of times a week here. We're trying to chat a couple of times a week. We're working on it. And we talk about anything and everything, minimalist planning, journaling, stationery, all the things. So if you love all of those things and you want to learn how to use the things that you have in a more intentional way, Way, then you're in the right place. So consider subscribing. So I'm going to be offering you about 10 different things and ideas, and hopefully you can apply at least some of them to, to your life. And hopefully at the very end, my hope with this video is that it not only offers you ways that you can save money, but you will actually see how you can kind of change some of your habits that might be taking you down the wrong path with um, overconsumption. So the first thing that I would recommend when it comes to that, so Tip number one. Tip number one is very simple and you will 100% hate it because it's definitely challenging. It will definitely trigger certain things, especially if you're using, depending on like your relationship to spending, that will kind of determine how you will feel about this. But doing a no spend month, and I recommend this for a whole month, you can try it for a week see see if uh, if you're able to kind of maintain it but really ideally you want to kind of shoot for a month i'm coming out of a no spend month within stationary so i'm only talking about stationary specifically and um, planner supplies and uh, decor and journaling supplies and fountain pen inks. That's the category that I'm talking about only because I did spend money on other aspects of my life, obviously. But when it comes to just stationary only, I am coming out of a two month, no, three months. I think it's two or three months um, a break. I think the last time that I bought any stationary would have been around Either I received it in January or I bought some of the things at early in January. I can't quite remember, but it was very early on in the year when was the last time that I actually ordered anything for myself. And then we kind of went, went on from there. I didn't really buy any stationery for the month of February and I didn't, I haven't bought anything for the month of March. March will be the first month that I'm actually kind of breaking that. So it's quite exciting, but I mean, I've learned a few things. And when it comes to no spend month, on one end, it feels very restrictive. And on the other end, it kind of takes you into my next point, my next tip, which is to use up your stash. So it gave me that freedom to really just utilize and use free and willingly all the things that I actually currently own and really challenge myself to be okay with not having this desire that I should immediately replace this, like the sticker sheet or whatever I currently ran out of to just run out and buy a new one. So I, I went ahead and I kind of reorganized some of my, like these are some of my sticky notes. And usually I'm like the first one to kind of replace a lot of the actual sticky notes because I'm always in need of it. And then when I've done that, I'm like, actually, 
like I have a I have a ton, so I can I can do so many different highlights within my planner, within my ring planner, within my within my Hobonichi planners that it will make the spread more interesting. I can use it in my journals. So I'm finding new and exciting ways to utilize the things that I currently have, which kind of reduces this desire that I should actually have more. My next tip obviously is to use regularly your current stash and almost like make it a goal to kind of run out of certain things. So I'm not talking about like tiny little icons that you have like a million of it. I'm talking about like decor pieces, decor sheets, um, washi tapes, if, if it's something that you're like really close to running out of or like washi like rolls, washi actual like sticker tapes, things that you end up utilizing on a regular basis. Like this whole folder would be a really great example where I bought it. Some of it, yes, I know it's seasonal, but some of it is just, it's something that I can like here, I'm almost done using this entire sheet. Um, some of it, I'm not using it as often and I really should. So it's sort of like, I'm, I'm really challenging myself to start utilizing my current stash instead of, instead of constantly feeling like I need to replace something that I have. But it also brings me awareness and it gives me that opportunity to review what do I currently own and what is something that I would not repurchase anymore. So in a separate video, if you guys want me to go over like what kind of what I actually learned from utilizing my current stash, what I would repurchase, what is something that I fell deeper in love with, just let me know in the comment section below and I would love to film that for you. By the way, if you're enjoying videos like this, please make sure that you subscribe and and you can also hit the notification bell so you get notified every single time I release a video like this one. Okay, tip number three. Tip number three is, um, this relates primarily to ink, but really it can be anything. Buy a sample before you buy a full roll. So in a couple of places, so um, in a couple of places online um, from stationery stores, I'm thinking Yoseka has this, uh, Wonderpens has this available. I believe that Atlas Stationery has this as well. I would have to double check and get back to you. I will just leave a note on the screen. But I believe they also have this available where you can buy a sample of an ink instead of buying a full bottle, which really it will take you, like it will give you about between two to three mils all the way up to sometimes five mils as a sample. And it costs only a few bucks, it allows you to really, especially if it's, uh, you know, like I've had inks where it's a complete and epic fail. It's just the ink was way too runny. It was just not working in any of my pens. So thank God that I only spent like three bucks on it versus buying a full bottle thinking that it's going to work out when really it's becoming an epic fail. But then I've done the opposite of that as well, where I bought multiple samples of like pilot inks and right now I'm at a point where it's like, no, you know what? I'm keep reusing it. I'm keep reusing it. I'm happy to actually buy the full bottle because I know I'm going to be using it more in the future. Okay. Uh, tip number four is, okay. Tip number four, it's not really a tip. It's actually a swap. So this is where we're going to give a shout out to things that you can buy a little bit less expensive. So I'm going to be comparing this to now I know, don't come at me in the comments, this is not a direct comparison, but it's in my mind, it's close enough. I'm just gonna give you a few few examples of this. So um, Cloth and Paper has these, okay, this would be a good example. So they have like the arrow sticky note. Um, they also have like these circles, these small circles. These small circles are vinyl, which means that it's going to be really difficult or challenging. You need a certain type of pen that you can use to write on, on it with. So my kind of swap for this, and I mean, they do serve its purpose. So I'm not calling this a dupe, like a cheaper dupe. I'm calling this sort of like a cheaper alternative. If your main goal is to find a smaller size sticky note, Muji. Honestly, Muji has this, I believe this comes in a set of three. So I have this cream colored one, I have this gray one, and I think I have another color somewhere. I have to find it, but I'm going to pull up the price. As far as I remember, it was like $4. They have been sold out. I think that they will bring it back really soon. I bought this in their actual store. Okay, currently they don't have this available. Oh yeah, wait, actually. So they have they have the clear version of this available and it comes in a set of four and it's $3.90. I'm quoting Canadian dollars. Um, 
and they sell this as an index sticky note. So as you can tell, like it kind of has a cutout. I really love this, um, mainly because it fits really nicely into my Hobonichi Weeks. I love um, flagging certain aspects of, um, like even in my Habino planner, I've also used this in, um, in my ring planner. So like I utilize this all the time. And the first opportunity that I get when they have this back in stock in the store, I will be stocking up more on this because not only is it inexpensive, but it's very, very functional. So the point is, if you're able to get your hands on something like this or any of the sticky notes from Muji, right now their close second is there, it's called a bookmark sticky note, where basically it's a size of this. It's a size of like these clear sticky notes from, these are called like the page flags from cloth and paper. So this would be the size that they have available. And they have them in about, I think, one, two, five different colors. So if you don't want to splurge on this, uh, that would be your nice alternative and they have this available on the website at the time of this recording. Next up is my tip number five is actually if you're buying glue regularly for stationary purposes and you wanted a better quality glue. So this is not a glue tape. It's called a wrinkle free glue. I wanted to give a shout out for this because this again, it costs three dollars and ninety cents at Muji. If you haven't bought it, I would highly recommend it. And I mean, if you're in the, U in the US, this would actually be even less expensive. I'm qu currently quoting you Canadian dollars. And I mean, it's, it's a huge bottle. You have like how much product? You have about, I think, it feels like 50, no, it has, it's 35 grams. So approximately 35 grams of product in here, which is quite a bit when it comes to glue. They do have a glue tape as well, like the actual like, little contraption that's $4.90, but this is the one that I bought. This is the one that I have. And I honestly, I haven't regretted it. It didn't wrinkle up my page, which is something that I was kind of struggling with, with like liquid glue in the past. So if you're looking for like a good, like less expensive alternative, this would 100% be it. Now let's talk about dot stickers. Dot stickers, I wanted to offer a, a, just a less expensive alternative as well, just because I wanted to kind of give a shout out to budgeting. And if you love dot stickers, but you really don't want to splurge, let's say $12, I'm buying it from Paper Plus Cloth, a nice alternative would be to buy these, uh, these dot stickers from, from Amazon. And I mean, I bought, I believe there's like eight different colors. So the color variety is quite nice. Obviously it's not the same quality as what you would get from, from some of the Japanese companies, but it's also like, sometimes you just like, sometimes we don't need to be fussy about the quality of the dot sticker, especially when you're just using it to highlight certain aspects of your page. Size wise, it's the same as, so this would be like a more expensive one. So this one is obviously on, on a, a totally different paper. It's slightly different, but basically the main difference is, is the colors are brighter. So sometimes when I'm looking for like a more muted color, I actually reach for this quite a bit. I do have like a full basket available. And I mean, I use all of them. So we have it in, in like green, we have it in like a blue, and then you have like a nice variety of blue that's happening. We have like this beautiful earth tones. So it's not like you're going to feel shortchanged when it comes to color, um, like color selection. So you get quite a bit. So I mean, I would highly recommend at least checking them out. I will just pop on the screen and I'm gonna see if I can find the actual seller that I bought this from. But I believe I paid about $18 to, to buy like, I think eight colors. So I mean, it was so inexpensive. So if you're looking for like a nice color variety when it comes to dot stickers, I would, I would highly recommend checking out Amazon because you're gonna be able to find much better deals. Now, next up, tip number seven. So this is if you love buying um, decor PET tapes or like decor tapes and they usually ends up costing you quite a bit or you buy like, like this would be a really good example of like this girl. You have probably seen this or like the Dolce La Vita um, girl is another really popular one. And then you end up splurging on like a full tape. 
I would highly recommend checking out Emma Stationery first because you can buy the full tape. So we can buy this or what you can do is you can buy just like a set. So what that means, I will show you on the screen of what I what I really mean, but I mean a set would be like, you get like a, a huge section like this. And I mean, honestly, it will take you quite a bit to get through it. I ended up buying certain tapes where I bought like the full roll. And in a way, yes, I do end up using it. I don't end up using it nearly as often as I thought. And part of me kind of wishes that I would have bought like the sample size. I'm calling it a sample size because you end up paying one tenth of a price to like buying a full roll. And at the same time, it's kind of nice because then it gives you a nicer variety of like just trying newer things out. Um, and the next, next one that I wanted to kind of point out the next step that I have for you is number eight, move more into a mindset of doing community swaps. And I've talked about this many times before, where if you are finding that there's a lot of stationery that you have, that it's just getting stale, you're, you're over accumulated certain things that you're not really using all that much. And, you know, it just kind of feels heavy or it just kind of feels like it feels very stagnant. My recommendation is to reach out to other planners within your community, whether that's through Instagram or even comment below on this video so that we can start connecting people. You can also do that on, on TikTok. TikTok is a nice place where you can do that, where you make a full collection of like, these are the things that I'm willing to trade. These are the colors that I have. These are the, um, the inks that I have that I would love to swap with other planner and stationary lovers. Please comment below and I put like a little goodie bag together and you do the same and we swap. I would just kind of caution you within this where you do this in a way where it becomes fair for both of you. So be very clear of what you're willing to give, how many items you're going to be putting into this goodie bag. And then that way, you know, if you're putting in washi tapes, let them know. So like have, have that open communication between the two of you and also make sure that you're not over giving and then you're receiving very minimal back because that's not really the point. The point is not to rip each other off. The point is so that you both essentially win, right? But I do believe that community swaps would be like a new way where we can really utilize and use up the things that we have. And also it's, it's, it's a nice way for us to really reconnect within the community, which I'm, I'm so hoping this, this will, this will be like definitely a trend within 2024. Um, number nine, number nine is, um, moving back into the, the stationary for just a moment or moving back into finances and budgeting. Honestly, if you're finding that you're kind of on a rat race all the time and you're, you're trying to like just finance and, and pay back all the things that you have the desire to buy or you already bought it and then you're constantly paying things back on your credit card and constantly making payment plans, here's what I would recommend. And you've probably seen me talk about this before, but I would recommend having a system like this. So I haven't really shown this too, too many times on here, but this is a small little amp, like binder that I bought that has all of our budgeting. So this is our cash envelopes. And we have a category for groceries, for pets. So basic categories, but keep in mind, like I have a category here for, oh my gosh, what is your name? For planner. And I end up putting money in here every single week or if I have to skip a week, then I try to stuff it as, as many times as I possibly can. For the most part, I end up stuffing this at every paycheck, uh, usually every single week, and I set aside a certain amount. So if I know that I'm going to be placing a larger order somewhere, then I make sure that I have a payment plan where it gets paid back within like a month or two. If I don't buy anything big, then the idea is, is that the money is already set aside here. By the time I go and buy the things, do a stationary haul, buy new inks, buy whatever, I'm actually buying it with cash I already have ready to go. So that's ideally where you want to get to, where you have like a few weeks worth of of funds that are already set up and ready to go. You can also have a separate envelope for fun and if you wanna fund it through there, but having cash envelopes, it makes it so visceral because it makes you aware of, of what you have, how much money you have available, 
what you can actually purchase, what you cannot purchase. So it just makes everything, especially when it comes to overconsumption, it kind of like wheels you back just like a little bit from that. Does that make sense? So I, I would highly, highly recommend getting into a system that is similar to this, right? Now tip number 10, which is my final tip. Tip number 10 is honestly make a shopping list um, when it comes to buying anything stationary. So you can just use, you know, your planner, like the notes section of your planner and start making, an, start making a shopping list of all of the things that you wanted to actually buy or that you're running out of, that you wanted to restock, that was really working for you. And then that way you can kind of see approximately how much you're going to be spending. If you have a certain budget, then, you know, obviously just make sure that you don't go above that. And that way, it, at least it, it adds some boundaries and some limitations as to what you're able to do and what you're not able to do right now. So these are my tips. I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below out of the 10 things that I mentioned, which one is your favorite? Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. And I hope that you guys are doing really well. I know that we took a little bit of a break from making videos. It's just been quite hectic in my life, but we are slowly coming back with more and more videos for you. So hope that you have enjoyed this one. If you did, you can support the channel as always and just keep planning, keep journaling. And I cannot wait to see you guys in my next one. Bye.